Um, so my name is Dylan Raylitz, but I go by Roscoe, and I really don't know how the name came about. <laughs> but well, one of the uh, ways it was this, uh, it's the entertainer named Roscoe Dash, and I had a mohawk at the time, and there was it was one of his things, you know, his chin. So everybody started calling me Roscoe and his stuff. So <laughs> I'm from New Iberia, Louisiana. Uh, first came to Bryan at the age of 13. My mom's followed her sister here. And I've been off and on uh, probably until 2013. My my first child, my son, he was born in 2014, so that pretty much made me stay here. Then I met my daughter's mother in uh, 2016, and we had our daughter in 2018. But as far as painting, I always did draw and sketch, you know, do anything kind of artsy, but I got serious about painting. Um, my son came to visit. He didn't have school for some reason that Monday. He didn't have school. So he came from Waco to visit, and I said, Kyle, what do you want to do today? He said, I want to paint. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so he like, I want to paint. So um, we go to Walmart. I get little small canvases and some acrylic paints and some little paintbrushes. And uh, cause I ain't know really what to get, cause I ain't never really take painting serious. And um, so we painting, you know, he take the painting home with him, and he had some left over. So I'm like, ah, I take a swing at it, see what I can do. So I did this painting, which to me right now I think is the most horrible painting ever. <laughs> <laughs> but at the time, at the time I was like, oh, this not bad. So I put it on Facebook to see what everybody would think, see what kind of reaction, and everybody loved it. Everybody would, Oh, can you do this for me? Can you? I'm like, well, all right, maybe I, I should go ahead and you know, uh, dabble more into this. So I started doing like moons and different landscapes and stuff. And I got better and better. I started looking at, on YouTube, seeing what can I do to like, you know, get better at this. And well, I mean, it wasn't hard because, you know, I always did draw, you know, I always did draw people portraits with charcoal or pencil. And, now everybody know about Roscoe the artist. Or they call me the art plug too. You know, I'm the <laughs> plug on art. If you want something uh, artsy, come ask me about it. Anything bad goes, because I paint off emotion or whatever's going on in the world or whatever's going on in my life, uh, I paint off of that. So any, like whether somebody dies in the family, instead of painting a portrait of them, I paint something that makes me think of them. You know, so that way, I, that was my way of coping with things. And it still yeah. is. That's my way of coping with things. Francesca. <laughs> Tell me about Francesca. <laughs> um, well, I like, I paint mostly at 3 o'clock, between 3 and 5 o'clock, because everybody else is sleeping. I have no uh, distractions. Mm -hmm. Nobody calling my phone, it takes me, and it's coming by the house. But, because um, I always wake up, I say, hey, look, like this painting is 4 o'clock in the morning. She said, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but and I had the lights on through all I I was up night so she can't really get sleep. And as far as uh me uh pushing my heart or doing anything, she really she don't cut no corner, so she she ain't worried about hurting my feelings. She's like, nah, um, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> or uh, no, it's, so it 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 really is really hurt because if I wasn't if it wasn't for her, I I go about it a whole different way. I wouldn't be this serious about it. The biggest challenge that I faced, my problem was trying to please, please my audience or please everyone else rather than saying, well, I'm going to do this because I like this. So trying to find something to paint, that's why I said I'm just going to paint off emotion because trying to please everyone, eh, because you can have a talent and everyone else that, that, do, that don't know how to do your talent or don't share the same gift you have, they're your biggest critics, even though they can't do what you do. So maybe you can sing and they can't sing. Well, ah, that wasn't a note for you, but they can't sing not one note. So that's what it was, just trying to please everyone else. I was afraid that I used too many colors or I, I was afraid of, well, I had to make it look real. But you know, I don't. I know they're not. There's, there's, no, there ain't nothing wrong with coloring outside the lines. There ain't nothing wrong with making one eye look bigger than the other. There's nothing wrong with the nose being too big or the head being too skinny. Just do you. Somebody gonna like it. it well, you should love it. So, 
Facts. <laughs> most definitely. Most definitely. Yeah. Uh, a lot. It, it helped me out a whole lot. Even as far as getting, uh, getting exposure or no, noticed by people in the music industry, like uh, cele- different celebrities and stuff, because I did portraits to them and somehow I got to them. So that helped a whole lot, because it wasn't for the internet. How was they going to see that? <laughs> That's cool. See, I would have thought that the internet made it harder for you, but it doesn't. It actually uh, has it, made it better. I mean, it, it is, as far as competition, because everybody wants to be a painter. Or everybody wants to be a barber, like different things like that. Everybody wants to do it because they see how much success you have in it. So, I mean, but long as you're not trying to overstep your boundaries or step on somebody else's toes, you know, it, it, it's not going to be bad for you at all. It's going to benefit you, if anything. Uh, whenever somebody think art, they just think of painting. Or if I say, hey, I'm an artist, they say, oh, you like, you do music? No. Right. <laughs> Like, uh, uh, I just feel like artists, anything they help you express was you, you know, it, it's your expression on whatever you use in art. Like, if I said I want to braid different strands of string together, that's my art, <laughs> but, you know, or uh, like this interview, this is your form of art, you using, using it to help people express themselves, you express yourself. Hey, you know NBA Young Boy? Yeah, uh, him, well, okay, there was this incident. This how this started. Like, me and his mom, actually, we, I'm not going to say we got cool like the best of friends, but <laughs> she know who I am and whenever I write her on Instagram. But um, it was an incident. I think he was in Colleen or somewhere. Uh, and one of his friends had on one of his uh, pieces of jewelry, and they snatched it off his, off his neck. Oh, no. I mean, off his neck. And there was a big incident that went viral. So, like me, this uh, I mean, I was making it as a joke. I did a portrait of him. I said, hey, y'all give him back his neck. And, but I didn't, like, go all in with the details or anything. I just, you know, it was just a portrait of him, but everybody else liked it. And everybody kept sharing it. And they were reacting to it. Some people were laughing because of what I said. And it got it got on Instagram, and they sent it to his mom. Really? So she posted it first. She was like, hey, who did the portrait of my son? You know, she trying to find an artist. And, oh, this is a nice portrait. They love my son. So everybody started tagging my name in the comment. Hey, this rocks for the artist work. And, it was, and I'm from Louisiana, and so a lot of my family in Louisiana, because uh, New Iberia is probably like 45 minutes away from Baton Rouge. And uh, so a lot of my family kept, kept tagging my name. All my siblings tagging my name. They said, hey, my brother did this. Or, hey, my cousin Roscoe, the artist did this. So she ended up uh, writing me on Instagram. She asked me if I did that. I said, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I took another picture of the, uh, of the paper so I could. Tell it like just the original piece. Yeah. I got it. You know, me. And she's like, thank you so much. And she asked me to do one of her. So I <laughs> did one of her. And she posted that too. And she had like all kinds of people just hitting me up, hitting me up. And when I did the one of uh, of him on the sheet, on the uh, blanket, his his kids' mom, three of his kids, uh, their mom, she posted on her uh, page. And she asked me to do one of some of her kids. And they had like different uh, DJs and stuff that's for these big uh, names like Kevin Gates and all yeah. of them. They all, they invite me, they want some stuff done too. So I'm like, all right, yeah, we getting somewhere. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, we getting somewhere, so. Um, well, my name's Dominic. Um, born and raised here in Bryan College Station. Graduated from Bryan High School. Was actually a musician first. I was a singer before I started dancing. Didn't start dancing until I was like 18. So, like, I've been dancing for about six years. So that's been wow. how that's how that started. I was dancing at a studio called MCM Dance Studios at first. And I had another friend that was just like, hey, come take this strength and flexibility class <laughs> at my studio. And I was like, okay. So I was a student there. <laughs> and literally a year later, she was like, do you want to teach here? And I said, I've only been dancing for two years. <laughs> she said, it's okay, I'll train you. You're fine. And I said, okay. And, like, five years later, I'm still at the studio. Like I teach dance, learning under her, and like, she's been an amazing support. She's been like my biggest support system through this whole entire wow. event. Like just me growing as a dancer. Well, I was in color guard, which is like basic dance. <laughs> I hate to say it like yeah. that, but it is like so. Like I had a small bit of technique, but not not much to hang with anybody I was in class <laughs> with. And so once I got there, it was just like. I was a fish out of water as soon as I got there. But then, like, we started dancing. We started stretching. And I'm just like, wait a minute. I got 
this. Like, like it was just like one of the best experiences of my life. Like there wasn't really a big shift, like person like in the um in from art to art. It just was like basically like, second nature, but like home wise there was. Like my family wasn't really supportive of it at first. They're like, mm. Why are you doing this, that, and the third? And I'm the oldest out of four kids. Wow. So like that was a big thing. I'm I'm the first boy and it was just like, Why are you doing this? This is girly and I didn't really listen to them. I just kept on going and just like that was my own support. Like yeah. for the most part. Yeah. Like through all that. I do. Really? Um, I still do shows at the theater company every so often. And I, I did a show recently. We did Rock of Ages. And mm-hmm. I was Franz. And that was like one of the best roles ever. So I got to sing and dance. And like, I don't know why, but like whenever I sing, like I'm the type that likes this belt at the top of my lungs. <laughs> and like, that was all of what yeah. Franz does. Yeah. And I was just like, I'm here for it. His, his moves, his dance moves are big and his voice is big. And that's literally everything I wanted to do. So every chance I do get to dance, I sing, I, I, I take it every single time. Not really. Like I just had friends that were just like that started me going to dance. They were like, "Hey, come take a dance class with us," and I was just like, "No." <laughs> For literally like a month, I told them no straight. Like every day, no, I'm not going. And then one day they like, drugged me to dance, and then like they started showing me videos of Misty Copeland, and yeah. like. She started dancing at like 13, so like that's really late for girls to start dancing, especially like since when you start point, you're supposed to technically start at like 10. Wow. So like she like she's like one of the biggest influences in my life personally as a black dancer, as an African American woman, like starting dance at a late age and having to like adapt to everything at that age and try to like get all her technique and like have that drive to still do it and like now where she is now she's a professional dancer, she's a principal dancer. That's a dream for me still. Like I still want to be a professional dancer in a ballet company. And like I still like I look up to her for that motivation still, and like that that's what gets me to stretch every day still, like for about an hour and a half a day, and like to practice my turns and practice my jumps. And um, my boss Ellen, she was a really big push for me. Like she, um, I, I auditioned for a um, Anim's dance program once, and like I was really skeptical about it. And so, like, she literally helped me, sat with me through that the whole entire audition process. Like, me filling out the paperwork. She literally took me from, from my house to the audition, had a snack ready for me. Like, she was that support system. Hey, I'm going to be here to help you. Just let me know what you need. Like, I want you to succeed. I'm here for you to succeed. If you need me, let me know. And, like, at that time, like, my mom wasn't big into dance. Like, my mom just bought me my first pair of ballet shoes, like, a month ago. Like, wow. ever. Like, the first pair she's ever bought me. And, like, Ellen, like, Ellen and myself, honestly, like Ellen's mom was a big push. Like basically, like my staff, like my staff, like my boss, and like all my people higher up than me, like really pushed me. And I haven't faced a lot of super, super big challenges, but I do plan on auditioning for like ball- like being in a ballet company. And like my biggest, I know this is gonna be like my biggest road, like roadblock. I've only been dancing for six years. Some of these kids and some of these adults have been dancing since they were two. So like my technique, I'm really having to like work twice as hard or like 18,000 times as hard as they do. But like, we're still working hard together, but like I'm having to like push a little bit more um, because uh, I'm lacking in some areas, but it doesn't get me discouraged at all. Cause like, I love the work. I love working hard and I love just, I just love it all. Don't give up. Just like be your own motivation. Like get a journal, write down what you want to do in life and write it down every day. Cause like the more you write it down, the more it gets stuck in your head, and it like it's like something in the universe hears it, and they're just like, yeah, they want that bad enough. We're gonna help them get it, and like it's just it's a it's a weird thing that like I live by. Like don't give up and just write stuff down. Like don't forget. Like if you wanna if you wanna be a professional singer, write that down every day. I'm a professional singer. I'm a professional singer. I will be a professional singer. Like write it down, like as if you are one in that instant and like it's just I don't know it just it helps build that extra confidence it helps push you further to get to what you want and how you want it and it helps you like it also helps you get into the mindset of thinking about what do I need to do to get to where I need to be so like for my example I write like I have a thing that I write down I'm a professional dancer in a ballet company every day it's a thing I, I've always done I still do it and like it drives me like, I need to stretch this every day I need to stretch this I need to record this so I can watch this and correct this and like it just gives me everything it helps me make a list and compart- compartmentalize everything I need to do like my circle before I started dancing was very poor I didn't care who I hung out with but once I started like dancing and immersing myself within the arts here in town just in general like I slowly started becoming a more positive person. Like my circle became more positive and just like, I've become just a better person and just like everybody like, just life has gotten easier.
Like, and especially being an African-American man, there are some things that are harder for me to do than some other people. And I hate to say that, but it's a thing. Like I've, I've personally been profiled. Like I've been, I've, I've walked in a store and had people just look me up and down. Like, why is he in here? Why is he in here? But like now that like, I have that more, I have more of a confidence and I hold myself at a higher, it helps me hold myself at a higher esteem, knowing all that, like, I don't know, it's, it's a, it's a lot. Like, that's one of the, the biggest things, just like, knowing like, I have this, since I started dancing, I built this, I built this confidence up and I have this new, I'm a new person. I'm the new Dominic. I know how to present myself. I know how to hold myself. Like, you can't look at me that way. I know who I am as a person. You can't, you can't scare me. And like in general, it's not even in just that sense, it's in every sense. Like it just builds like a whole different person. It turns you into a new you like that. It, in a way it is. A lot of the, um, in the dance world, a lot of roles are um, given to a lot of white people because black people, like there, there are companies for black people, but they're in only specific parts. Like mm -hmm. my dream company is being in Alvin Ailey. That's in New York, that's in Harlem. Like I'm all the way here, Brian, Texas. So like, there's not, especially being in Texas, like there's not a lot to do, like there's not a lot for African American dancers to do in Texas in general, just because it's Texas. Absolutely. Like, but like my, I, I think of it this way. It might be hard, it might be harder for me, but it's not impossible. Yeah. I just gotta work towards it. That's just, that's even more, that's giving me even more motivation. Like I'm gonna get there and no matter how hard it's gonna be.